I didn't put the number. What chat is this? 75. Uh, it shows up on mine. Greetings. Hey, what's going on, folks? Larry here. Hey, I'm back on today. Been off for a few Sundays. Sorry about that. But, you know, things just come up unexpectedly in life, and you just have to go with the flow and deal with them from day to day. So, no biggie. Uh, there's plenty of other stuff to do uh, while you're dealing with fountain pens, right? Well, today I got a lot of stuff to talk about because I haven't been able to get on like I like to. Uh, well, first of all, uh, a friend of mine and Mr. Announcer uh, got really sick. So he had to go to the emergency room and uh, I had to do a bunch of tests on him, lab work, CAT scans, x-rays, bronchoscopy, you name it, they did it. He was having a problem swallowing. In fact, he cannot swallow liquids or food. So um, they still weren't finding the reason for that. So our doctor said, let's do a CAT scan on the back of his head for his brain and up here on the throat. Now, they've done many throat x-rays and CAT scans and chest and back, lungs, and the whole nine yards. Well, they found out he had a tiny stroke. You can... You can welcome anybody. He had a, he had a tiny stroke. Hello to Pete. And uh, what that stroke caused his esophagus to swell up. So he's not able to swallow, period. So he's only 54 years old. So, of course, he can't go to work right now. They had to put a feeding tube in his abdomen. So I... And Mr. Announcer, we learned how to help him with the feeding tube, which he's already learned how to do that. That's a plus. But we have to uh, really grind up uh, the meds he takes. And they have to be in powder form. If they're too big a chunks, it could block up that feeding tube. And that can cause some serious problems. So, and then to keep around the, uh, where the surgery was done to insert the feeding tube into the abdomen, have to keep that clean. Hello, George. And he has a home health nurse that will start coming on Wednesdays. Uh, he's got cases of uh, food that's come in, Glucerna, is that how do you say it? Glucerna. Yep. And, uh, of course, he has his coffee still and tea and milk. Uh, uh, but, you know, he can't have shakes or nothing like that, too thick to go down the tube. So I've been at the hospital every day, sometimes twice a day, you know, I'll go to get up early, do my morning routine, then uh, go to Starbucks real early in the morning, do some journaling and try to do some research on pens, uh, then head up to the hospital. We get there about 7, 7.30, wait for the doctor to come. We take him walking up and down the hall outside. We do this for a couple of weeks. He finally got discharged. Everything's in place. He's at home. Uh, went to the movies. He does... He's able to drive, but he still had that cough gurgling because of swallowing. So, uh, I mean, I feel for the guy, you know. Uh, but, you know, things in life happen. So, that's where I've been. I've been really busy uh, watching over him and helping him all I can. But he's doing good enough. And hopefully in a couple of weeks, he can go back to work, hopefully. Even though if he can't swallow, he'll be... Uh, having to feed himself at work with uh, his his special liquid food. All right, so that's where I've been, and um, I've really been just really up overwhelmed and overloaded with stuff going on. So now let's go into the fountain pens. Uh, a friend of mine, thank you, Bill, was at the uh, DC Pin Show, and he picked me up this. It's the Monteverde special edition of the DC Super Show Blue Ink. Hello, Ink Guy. And I, I, I think I've already did a review and talked about this, but this is one thing that's pretty cool. I've never been to the DC uh, pin show, but uh, I hear it's uh, pretty sensational. Uh, now, I want to talk real quick about my pin carry real quick. 
Uh, I've got my trusty O Mont Blanc Legrand 146. Beautiful pen, and it writes extremely well. Then I've got a pen that I'll, I'll be doing a review soon. The oversized Rosetta. And I'll give more detail on that later. And then a pen I've reviewed. Paris Custom Starline XL, which I've reviewed. And, uh, hey, sometimes I may uh, slip up and say the wrong stage or city. So, yeah, they're in Arizona. Okay, we got that cleared up. Cool. And then I will be doing an updated review with the rest of my Keras Customs from Arizona. Right there, the K. These are the ink. And the K, I love them. These two are upgraded nibs to titanium nibs, which is my favorite nib. And I put my titanium nib up there with gold nibs or palladium nibs any day of the week. This is me saying it. You may disagree. Cool. But that's you. For me, that's how much I love the titanium nibs. They're really a nice, wet, smooth rider, at least from Keras Custom they are now i'm not sure if they're going to have if it's going to be that way from uh any other pen company that i may pick up a titanium nib is the consistency going to be there i hope so hello, hello to michelle hey michelle and here is the Keras custom k now this has a box nib and i was going to do a review on that because I done worked on my nib, made it wetter, and I was really happy with it. This was a pen that was given to me by a viewer that I really appreciate a couple of years ago. But, you know, it was just so dry when I wrote with it that I put it in the pen drawer and it kind of sat there for, I don't know, a year and a half, didn't touch it. So one day I said, you know what, I like this pen a lot. I do like Kara's Custom Pens. They're one of my favorite pens of all times. Uh, I, I made the pen wetter. After I did that, I've had the pen in my pocket, pants pocket, shirt pocket, and I just use it every day. Love the pen. Uh, and when I say love it, love my pen. So one day when I changed my jeans out, put uh, everything in the washing machine, then in the dryer, that next day, I was looking for my pen, and I couldn't find it. I looked everywhere, in the bedroom, in the pen room, in the den. Couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. Then I said, I wonder if I put that in the washing machine. Well, then I said, well, check the dryer. I'm going through the dryer, right? And there was the cap. It was still in my jeans securely. Wasn't going anywhere. Cool. I pulled off the cap, but the barrel and the nib were not even in the pocket. So I go through all the clothes in the dryer, and I find it. And this is what it looks like. But it, it looks worse than this. Look at the nib. This is what happens when it's in the dryer. Can you see that pretty good? Look at that nib. That is bad. It was worse than that. You know, I said, what the heck? I'll mess around with it and try to straighten it out, even though there's beyond hope. So. Michelle says she likes the titanium, uh, but they have a lot of tooth for her. Yeah, for me, they don't have any tooth for me. Uh, for me, they write really uh, nice and smooth. Uh, I've heard a few people say that. Uh, I've yet to experience that, and I hope I don't, because I don't like toothy nibs at all. And George says he's got 40 years of uh, patient feeding tube experience, if we have any questions on it. George, really? Private message me, George, and uh, we can talk privately about that. Thank you. Info is needed. But anyway, here's the, the Keras Custom K pen. The washing machine didn't, didn't hurt it at all. 
the dryer didn't hurt it. So, you know, this pen is built to last. Any of these pens are built to last. So, you know, I, I really do love these pens. They're my favorite pens, and I really love the titanium nib. And I'll say it again. I'll put it up there with my gold nibs and palladium nibs, and it'll hang right in there with them. That's how much I love Kara's custom titanium nibs. Now, I don't know if other dealers are going to be, if their titanium nibs are going to be consistent. Uh, let's see, th these two came from Goulet pens. So they're consistent on the nibs. This one plus my Starline XL came from Paris Custom Pens. They're just as good as the previous one. So I'm hoping that all Bach titanium nibs are consistent to the way these pens are. Only time will tell. So thought I'd get that going. Michelle said she would have thought that the uh, fountain pen would have made a lot of noise in the uh, dryer, but I guess you had enough clothes in there that kind of dampened yeah, the yeah, sound. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh huh. Trying to get that kind of light back here, adjust up the screen. But anyway, get a drink. Um, but the uh, it was a shocker. In fact, tomorrow I've got to order me a, a number five uh, Bach nib. I'm gonna just stay with the Bach nib since I have. Two tita three titanium nibs and uh, go with a medium again and that's it real quick here's a pen that I know Michelle will love the color that I love and I I've had this pen for about let me see this is eight probably about six months still in the pen wrap and as y'all can tell, y'all know what the pen is, right? Yeah, it's the big, fat, chunky, purple Jinhao 159. Still have that, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this gorgeous pen yet. But... I just had to bring that up because I, I really like the color of this pen. It's just a nice color of a pen, right with. Now, I'll be having an upcoming review on this baby. It, this pen doesn't get hardly any love, so I will soon be doing a review on this pen. It has a broad nib. Love it. Like it cool pen. Now, what I want to talk about some vintage. For some reason, I, you know, I've been thinking about vintage and maybe want to dip into vintage, vintage a little bit. I don't want to have to dip in far enough where I have to get uh, the, uh, the parts that I need, you know, bags for bag fillers, levers, the talcum, all that stuff. I, I don't want to go that deep to fully repairing the pens that I get. So, you know, my problem is I have to find a pen that I can afford that's already been repaired and ready to go. So. Oh. George says he loves the Rosetta Coronado pens. George, I'll go ahead and say it. That's the one I'm going to be doing, buddy. You said it, George. I... I have to get, let the cat out of the bag. That's the one I'm going to do. Love the pen, George. I love the pen. So let me talk a little bit about some of these pens. I've done kind of a review on it, but a review that I wasn't really satisfied with because I didn't get enough information. I didn't go into depth to really find the heart of what I was looking for to share with everybody. So that's been on my mind bugging me. And I think I've done this review either this year sometime or last year, probably last year. But it's always been on my mind. And to find that information down, it's been kind of hard because, you know, the, the way these pins came to me were in parts, missing caps, 
so on. Hello, Matthew. Hey, Matthew. So, another review I'll be dipping into the vintage, which I've done part one of it, and I'll probably post that later, is going to be the Weaver. And I'll let Mr. Announcer share that with you. Uh, this is the Wherever Pennant, I believe. Wherever Pennant. So, and I do have some Weaver pins as well. Uh, now, the pennant is from 1950 to 1963. Uh, so, the transition into the 50s led wherever to focus on a really cheap, high volume manufacturing pin. So, and I guess they got what they wanted because it happened, but I, I have a review coming up that's going to do some explain it about that pin part one now what has been bugging me are these pins right here let me get them over here michelle's been getting some good vintage pins from a source on instagram oh okay right here these pins that you know i don't know if you can see them can you see mr announcer okay well you know i wasn't really happy about this pin on the review wherever fountain pen and let me tell you why because this cap is not the cap that goes on the body even though it says wherever it didn't go there so here i am we're looking through the internet whew, trying to hunt down this pen the barrel and we're going through the color the shape and the nib trying to find out all the information. Well, we did find that information. And this is a wherever vintage Pioneer. And it originally retailed for 50 cents. So they call this the 50 cent pin. Uh, it's an air seal. The entire cap is stainless steel pin uh, with a new point, newly designed. This is what the information that was said. And you can find it on eBay. There's a display dated back to 1959. And the display case, like the dime store had back in those days. And that's about, what, a half a century ago, back dated 1959. The display case came with a display case, plus with a dozen of the Pioneer fountain pens in different colors. And that uh, wherever Pioneer pen display case with the dozen pens runs for about $165. If I was able working, I would jump on it. Uh, but, uh, you know, I will continue my journey to try to find a cap, a screw on cap for this and try to find out where this cap really goes to. And here is another one. And they both have the, the plastic feed. The, this is the white one, clear one, maybe the clear white plastic feed. And uh, this one here is a uh, but I'm looking for it. This is one that just says stainless steel nib. So, and I'm trying to find out where this nib attaches to what body. And then I have a barrel that the uh, wherever nibs, they don't fit on here. And this nib does not fit on here. It, <clears throat> Excuse me, it could be maybe a, a Schaefer body, uh, but you know, there, there's no markings on the pin, on the barrel whatsoever. I've been looking for it. But that's what I've been doing lately. Uh, I did that uh, video on the Starliner XL, and I was really excited about that video because I kind of worked it in with the uh, Starliner XL, how it all came together, 
uh, and you know, if you dig space, you dig the video. I dig space, stars. Uh, but talking about affordable fountain pens, I believe Kara's Custom, they just hit it right on the nail. They went back, rethought, replanned, research to bring the price of the fountain pen down where other people that are really strict on their budget and finances like me can afford a decent fountain pen. And for 55 bucks, you can get one of those with a, a bulk nib. If you go to a titanium nib, which isn't a bad price, it's like $45 for the upgrade. And I think that's a decent price for that nib. You know, and they do have gold nibs as well for a hundred and something. But you know, it's 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 kind of cool how we all are so different. Like you know, here I am talking about the titanium nib, how much I love the nib, and I'd put it up there with gold nibs or palladium nibs. Well, that just me. Then other people. But say, no, no way, man, you're crazy, you know. They don't even come close. Well, you know, that's them, and, and, and that's cool. But each one of us are different in our likes and dislikes. And it's okay to agree or disagree, but to me, it's not okay to dog somebody just because they express what they like or even what they don't like. You know, you can always express yourself, I think, in a well-mannered way if you don't like something or disagree with somebody because that's a right to agree or disagree. Uh, I've had some people that were kind of tacky about it, and that's cool. Doesn't bother me. Words don't bother me. Uh, I just wonder how they live their lives, how they crucify somebody or really cut somebody down just because they don't agree and like I said it's okay to not agree but you can disagree in a civil uh, manner and have debates on it you know so I thought I'd mention that a bit yes. hello to uh, big block D from Germany hey guy what's going on mr. announcer and I are working on a new design for a cap and shirt, and this one's going to have a dragon and a rattlesnake and a nib. It's going to be pretty awesome. Uh, why the dragon? Well, I, I, I like dragons for one thing. Um, and when I see a dragon, it reminds me of the Japanese pins and Chinese pins. Why? I guess because I've seen it on pins before. And then... Uh, the uh, excuse me. The uh, rattlesnake is uh, for Texas, you know the rattle. So yeah, that's what it reminds me of. And in fact, I'm I'm, I'm in an auction right now trying to uh, win this cool pen. It's a vintage pen, rattlesnake uh, on the pen, on the clip, and then it's got the rattlesnake uh, skin on the on the pen uh, soon I'll be doing some uh, reviews on some glass dip pens in my last set got mistakenly thrown in the trash so I've got three coming in I can't wait to use those that's going to be a lot of fun uh, and I'll be doing a giveaway soon uh, there's a pen that Kevin from uh, Fountain Pen Revolution sent me. I'm trying to find it. It's the Indus. Is that how you pronounce it? Yes. Yeah. It's the Indus. And that uh, with a bottle of ink, it's the blue black bottle of ink. That's going to be going soon on a giveaway. And I probably will be adding more goodies to that so that's going to be happening soon so 
been super, super busy here on this end. Uh, hello to Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Uh, just a lot of stuff that's been going on. And, uh, you know, uh, it just, uh, it's a bummer what happened to Alan, our, our roommate. Uh, the poor guy has to, you know, sit there while, while we eat. We, we don't try to do it in front of him. But he said it's okay. So, uh, you know, while we eat, enjoy our food, and then he just sits there and does nothing. But what's cool about it, since he's learned how to use that feeding tube, he told me this morning he had three cups of coffee. Cool. Three cups. And then he had his uh, Starbucks, that cold mocha, whatever you call them. Yeah, he likes those. So he had that. And later he had some tomato juice or V8 juice. Blue. He likes stuff like that. So, uh, and then he had his lunch, the uh, Lucerna. And he had to test, you know, three times a day. And it is on metformin. And this doctor at the hospital, not his primary doctor, uh, put him on one tab of metformin twice a day. And he should be taking two tabs of metformin twice a day. Uh, plus, over that other pill, I call it John, uh, Jordan. Uh, Jordians. Jordan, yeah, he takes that. So when he sees the doctor tomorrow, uh, he'll let him know that, hey, he can be back on the regular metformin I was taking. So hello to Tony. Hey, Tony. And we've got some discussion going on on the Keras Customs pins. Okay. Uh, Michelle likes the pins very much. Uh, the says that the titanium is different from the gold. It's, it's a material neat, unique to itself. Uh, Ter uh, Jerry says that they have an industrial look to them, to uh, according to him, that yeah. they were like they were factory, all factory made, I guess, kind of mm -hmm. reproduced quickly. Uh, Big Block likes the mechanical look of the pens. So well, real quick, nice. real quick, they're, uh, they're made in house in machine shop, so they're all machine made. Go ahead. That was it. Okay. So, uh, and that's what I like about them. Uh, you know, then they, Coat them with a the color and high polish, and uh, it just really works super well. Uh, I'm a big fan of Karen Carrots Customs, and you know I'm, I I really do have a, I have a lot of fun when I use these pens. It's just uh, they're just great pens for me. Uh, and that little Carrots Custom K is a really a, a cool pen. You know I I, I can post it if I want, or it's uh, big enough without posting. Uh, it's a nice pen. These pens feel comfortable feel comfortable in my hand, and they're not slippery at all, not whatsoever. Uh, I've had some pens that were slippery, uh, and to other folks, they weren't slippery, and vice versa. So, again, it's just people with different likes and dislikes so that's been going on so that's what's been happening anything else been going on i'm trying to think um oh i may be not sure yet selling a fountain pen the aurora optima Flex. Well, that pen, but they only made so many of them, and I uh, paid almost what six bills for it. The pen's magnificent. There's nothing wrong with it. The color, to me, honestly, is boring, but the nib is great, just fantastic. But you know, I I don't really flex much, so. I have this pen that I hardly use. Well, in fact, I haven't used it in, I have to look it up, probably, I don't know how many months. Uh, but I'm thinking about selling it. You know, it'll come with the, the pen case the way I got it. Hello to Jason and Blue. 
Hey, Blue. Hey, Jason. Hey, Blue. No offense, but on the Andy Griffin show, uh, I remember Barney Five. He had a dog named Blue. He was uh, trying to use him as a police dog. But I just thought I'd bring that out. A little humor. Anyway, so. And Michelle wishes the Fountain K was postable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I said, here's the Fountain K. And uh, you can put the cap on it. This is the K right here. There it is. Uh, but you have to put it on there so it won't, you know, securely enough that it won't fall off. But this is the K. Sometimes I put it on. Sometimes I won't. But, you know, there is a, a size difference. You can totally see that. That's This is the big brother to, to the K. But, uh, you know, I do like the industrial look. Uh, nice. I do like the colored ones as well. They're nice. And I, I really fell in love with the... Uh, the Starliner, man, the Starliner just kicked it. And to Jerry, he only had the dog for one episode. Yeah, that's a bummer, wasn't it? Doggone it. I like old Blue. Mm. He blew that whistle. Let's see, uh, Blue says the olive green looks nice. It, it is. And believe it or not, this pen, I only use Monteverdi olive green ink in it. Uh, but yeah, here's the Starliner XL. Pull off cap. And there's that beautiful titanium Bach nib. I really do like this pen. It's really a, a nice, cool pen with a converter. And it does post. So it, it's great. It's just a nice, functional Mountain pen, nice polished job on it. They did a great job. And I, you know, I like the three, two, one, you know, blast off like the Cape Pernabal and the astronauts, all that was kind of involved in it. So, yeah, good thing going on here. I do like it. Really, really nice. I, I, I think they'll see, I've filled this thing up three times. So, that, that's pretty cool. Well, did anybody happen to go to the DC show this year? While we're at it, the Fort Worth Pin Club meets September the 10th at 6.30 p.m. at the Dixie Cafe here on, in Fort Worth off of Hewland. So that's the next coming up event before the Dallas Pin Show. Okay, a question from Blue. Uh, in your opinion, which of the Keras fountain pens writes best for long writing sessions? Well, to be honest with you, for me, and this is the honest truth, both of them did really well. Uh, I always give the pens a test, and I write with them for about an hour. You know, I may do, I don't know, 10, 12, 13 pages with a pen and uh, my fingers didn't get cramped. Uh, of course the ink has, the, the fountain pen ink has more girth to the pen than the K's, it's a bit slimmer, but uh, for me they worked really well. But if I, I guess if I had to choose, I'd probably have to go with the, if I had to now, I'd probably go with the ink. But uh, like I said, the, the K is a, a dynamite pen as well. Let's see, Michelle says the K is uh, not bad for long writing. She likes the decograph and the ink, uh, and she prefers larger pens. The Let's see, the grip on the fountain K is a bit skinny and doesn't know about the Starliner yet. Uh, Jerry wants to wear his Omarosa cap this time. Uh, I would suggest try wearing a Beto cap and see what happens. All right. 
Okay, so back to it. Uh, did anybody go to the DC Pin Show that's on here right now? Anybody? Nobody? Hmm. Uh, how many people going to the Dallas Pin Show? Me. Anybody else? Dallas Pin Show. All righty. I don't see too many hands up. And what else has been going on? Now, Michelle does have the Starliner, just hasn't had it long enough to know about riding. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, you know, I just, when I get a pen, I just don't jump on and do a review on the pen. Uh, I I like to get the pen and, and before I review it and, and get to know the pen, get acquainted with the pen get that feel of the pen and how is it going to perform on a long-term basis. If I write 30 minutes, 45 minutes an hour, uh, how is that ink flow going to be? on? How is the nib going to be to the paper? Um, and, you know, every once in a while I may get a nib that it's a bit toothy, scratchy, and you just, I, I just can't take it. I just don't like nibs like that. But I know people that do like nibs like that. Yep, they really do. Extra fine nibs. Uh, I have a couple because reviewing pens, you had to have them, I guess. I got requests for them. I, you know, some of them are a bit too toothy for me, and some of them are are not. They're just dry. So uh, I'm not really. Well, first of all, I, I'm not into extra fine nibs. But like I said, doing reviews, I get a few. I don't get an abundance of them by no means. Uh, there's other reviewers out there that will. They'll get all kinds of extra fine, fine, and that's cool. I, I guess I'm very selective. Um, to each their own, right? Right. Um. I have the uh, notebook thing going on. I started that back up. So I've got another review coming up with one. Uh, there was something. Quite a bit of reviews. Uh, on this. The Aurora. Yeah, I wanted to show you guys this. This was the only the goodie, the Aurora. How many of you can recognize this pen? Nice pen. Aurora does put out a, a nice pen. And I believe this is the medium nib. On this, yeah, it says it on the feed. But it's a, a nice pen. You know, I did like the color. I do like the color of the pen. It writes nicely. Anybody have any new uh, pins on the wish list that they're thinking about getting? Matthew did ask if anybody has picked up a Twisby Go. No, I've been thinking about that. And I may pick one up when I order a nib tomorrow. I'm, I mean, they're talking about affordable. They are for affordable. Well, in fact, I was going to order one from Goulet. The blue one, but they, they were out of stock. It went pretty quick. I've heard some other people talk about them and they like them. So go from there. Uh, would you guys call yourself pen collectors or pen users? I'm a pen user. I just, I, I, I don't collect pens, but I, on the other hand, I, I guess you can say I collect pens because like on the Keras Custom Ink, you know, I've got two different colors, but I use these pens. I just don't let them sit. Um, 
I know on the Visconti Van Gogh, I was using them, but I was collecting the series of them, and I had about six or seven at one time. Let's see. Jerry says the Aurora looks like a big banana, so you're you're revealing your age there, buddy. Yeah. Uh, I'm a young 28. Don't I look like it? Big Block wants to get a Ranga pen. A Ranga? Ranga? Yeah, Ranga? yeah. I heard, yeah, I heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Matthew says he's both a user and a collector. Blue is a user. Uh, let's see. Jerry asks, what's the definition of affordable? Affordable is, well, to me is, Larry, can you afford that pen? Yes or no? That's affordable. Anything that doesn't cause you to have to skip your next few meals, I would guess. Right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Michelle doesn't like the smell of the Ranga Ebonite. Okay, I have never deal with that. Uh, Michelle, if, if can you elaborate more on that? Uh, since I, th I guess you have one since you know how it smells. I, I, I don't have one. I don't know how they ride, how they function, nothing. So if you have time, can you put some stuff in about it? And Big Lock says he is a user. All right. I'm thinking about another new T-shirt to come out. It's going to be I'm a user on the back or on the front. I'm not sure where I'm going to put it yet. And then there's going to be a fountain pen underneath it. And Jerry is a user as well. And I'm hopefully Michelle is writing vigorously. Uh, she says it smells like burnt tires. Huh. Yeah. How does it write, Michelle? How does it feel in the hand? Are they a light pen, a mediocre pen, heavy pen, big pen, medium pen? What? Uh, the two she had were eyedropper only. Uh, one wrote great, the other burped too much, so she got rid of the, uh, both of them. Michelle, can you explain burp to the people out there? I'll let you have this one. I've gotten some emails on that. And on that Rangu, is that the, how you pronounce it? It's either Ranga, Ranga, Ranga or Ranga. Ranga. Uh, isn't that an Indian made pen? Speaking of Indian-made pens, let me know if she elaborates yeah. any on that. Here is the the uh, the pen I did, I think last week maybe, on the uh, Constellation eighty eight, the Delta. Uh, let's see, they are big girth pens. She liked the acrylic one and kept it. Uh, pretty cool pocket pen. You do have to post it because it's really too small in the hand. So what I like about it, you can screw on the cap and then you have a voila, full side pen and really a nice smooth nib on it. it comes with a converter. Yeah. And she got them from Peyton Street pens. Okay. How many people on here, seriously, like this 159 Jinhao? A nice, girthy pen that uh, looks like the Mont Blanc 149. That's what got me started with the Mont Blancs. The Jinhao 159. Beautiful pen. I really like it. It's a great buy for the buck. Okay, Michelle says burping is a big blob of ink splatting on the page while writing. There you go. Now, Michelle, explain to the people that will be watching this video sometime during this year. How do you prevent a pen from doing that? 
Hey, George loves the Jen Howell 159. Where do you live, George? Chicago. Okay, uh, Michelle says, since they were eyedropper only, they had to be filled full of ink. When the ink level went lower, it would burp more. Uh, the bar barrels were thick enough that uh, heat from the hand wouldn't have caused it. Okay. So just to keep it from burping, you would have to fill up the level of the ink on the barrel, correct? Is that what you did? And George lives in Sacramento. Sacramento. And George is the one that's going to email me about the yes. feeding. Good, mm -hmm. good. Um, she also says, buy quality-made pens to prevent the burping. A quality pen? Yeah, quality-made, good pens. If you don't mind me asking, Michelle, what did that pen run you? About 80 bucks, 90 Let's see, her Franklin Kristoff pens don't have any burping issues. Uh, Big Block likes the uh, appearance of the Mont Blanc Meisterstück, uh, but there's no way he could uh, spend that money for it, uh, especially since it's used by bankers mostly. Uh, Michelle says, yes, they would have to be filled more than half full to uh, help burping. I know some, uh, some viewers have said they've taken out the nib and cleaned the feed and readjusted the feed and nib and that doesn't help and um so i gave my take on it so i don't know because they if it uh if they did what i suggested but uh and she got the two pins in a trade oh, okay oh has anybody tried that new ink i was telling you about from the dc Super Show, the DC Super Show Blue, the Monteverde. Has anybody tried that ink yet? Just curious. There's a pen that I'm saving up, been saving. It's going to be the Pelican M18. Well, I guess nobody has tried uh, it. Yeah, nobody's tried it so far. I probably will never go to the Dallas, I mean, to the uh, DC pin show. I do have some new Monteverdi, uh, not Monteverdi, I do have some new uh, Tumbo River notebooks coming in. Uh, I know Bur I spoke with Nick from Birmingham Inks to emails and I've got a few things coming in from him it's going to be interesting on the uh, paper mate uh, flare pens I've had some viewers ask me about doing the review on that and uh, did get in talk, contact with a person on Facebook that handled the paper mate uh, flare pens and he was supposed to send me some this was month or month and a half ago two months ago and that never happened so what i might do is pick up a couple of uh paper mate flare pens and and just go from there uh, michelle likes the monteverde inks that she has but doesn't have the super show blue uh jerry gave his son a bunch of gin hell pens to take to school to see what the kids like about them what grade is your son in jerry
Oh, he works for the district. He's not in school. Oh, okay. As a student. Ah. Oh. I don't think I'd give any to my seventh graders. We'd have ink all over the room. <laughs> or trying to stab each other's yeah. eyes out. <laughs> Trying to adjust the screen. Got some glare on my end on this end right there. Glare part. Like blinding me. The last sip. Okay, the uh, all, the Jin House Swan pins are like the uh, shark pins, but with a clip. Ah, okay, okay, I got you, I got you. Yeah. Speaking of shark pins, anybody go see uh, Mega? Meg, the Meg. Oh, Meg, I always call it Mega. Well, I was called it Mega Shark, wasn't that one time? Then I was called it Mega, and it's really Meg. It looks like Ink Guy manages to let his students use fountain pens, okay? Uh, Blue asks, how many ink bottles do you have in total? Let's I'd see. say close to 75. Well, I guess, yeah, because it goes deep back there and back there and back there. Yep, not including what's over there or what's down in there. So Close to 100, maybe. A lot of, lot of inks. And uh, what I stopped doing is just buying bottles of inks because a lot of inks I don't use, but I, I leave them there for display or maybe for an upcoming review if somebody brings it up. But uh, I'll buy samples of inks uh, to see if I really like it. And I finally got rid of one whole tray, which holds 40 vials of samples. Got rid of that. And then I think I have two trays left totaling about maybe 75 bottles of that in there, the little, little vials, get to use those up. So I, I only want to buy inks that I really like. Uh, here's one for you. I, I do have some uh, shimmering inks. Um, they're okay, but Ah, uh, just not my thing. Uh, here's one ink that it's okay. It's the Dime My Magical Forest. Um, uh, it's all the good stuff down in there. You see, go like you know. Uh, I found out with for this with a larger nib, it, it, it looks better that shimmering, but uh, I don't know. It just uh, I think I may have a couple of more bottles of shimmering ink. It just I'm not a big fan of it, so I stay away from that. But I need to get me another bottle of uh, Private Reserve Spearmint, another bottle of uh, Noodler's Bay State Blue. And I think that's it for now. I think. I've got some Blackstone up there, ink as well. And I, I really fell in love with it at first. And now it just kind of just sits there. So I don't know if I fell out of love with it or what happened. So uh, let's see. Michelle doesn't like the shimmer tastic inks, if they clog the feed too much. And uh, pin BBS inks are much better. Pin BBS inks. You know, is that from Michelle? Yeah. You know, Michelle, I have never, ever tried pin BS inks. What would you compare those to? And that would be a Chinese line of ink, wouldn't it? Uh, Big Block got the Diamond Shimmering ink Seas, but hasn't used it yet. Which one? Diamond Shimmering Seas. Okay. Uh, you can get samples of it from Van Ness. Ah, oh, okay. 
I need to. You got a pen by your ass, I mean. Yeah, pen I need to write that down because I am interested to check that out. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, pen BBS. From, where from again? Van Ness. Van Ness. Okay, cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Which ones do you have, Michelle? Okay, with a uh, $40 order from Van Ness, you can get free shipping. Okay. What colors do you have? She has pink, purple, pink. and blue sparkles. Oh, how is the pink? Uh, you know, I bought the uh, Lamy, the vibrant pink, and I just, yeah, I didn't care for it. Uh, she has no issues with some other not samples of non-sparkle inks from Pim BBS as well. Okay. Well, folks, it's already left to one thirty. Go ahead. Uh, what was it about the Lamy pink that you didn't like? It, it wasn't vibrant to me. It was just dull, flat. I just, and I gave the bottle away already. It was just, I don't know. I have a sample of the, where is it? One I really mm -hmm. liked is the, uh, let me see. Before I go, I'll share the, the, Aquaman, uh, is that pink? No, that's not pink, would it? What is that? Well, I'm looking for the other one. Uh, it says it's pink. Ah, here it is. Yeah. What, what is the name of it? Uh, Pulkery Pink. Pulkery Pink. Yeah, yeah. I've got a couple of bottles of this samples. And this is really nice pink. I like that a lot. Uh, Ink Guy likes the Levenger Pink. Levenger Pink. Who does? Ink, Ink guy. Lavender pink. And uh, Big Block likes uh, the uh, Lamy Dark Lilac. Ah, Lamy Dark Lilac. Got that. I really like it. Good stuff. Good stuff. And uh, Jerry says... If I dare say it, he uh, they should make a Spalding pink ink. I see. You go for it, Jerry. Rock on, brother. <laughs> Michelle likes the Ackerman 12 Magenta. You know, Ackerman really has some very fine inks. I, I'm, I'm really digging on Ack Ack Ackerman inks. They really are cool. Yeah, but back to that Lamy. That Lamy Dark Lilac, it rocks. I mean, it's some great stuff. I've got a little left, uh, so. Uh, have they stopped making that? And you can get it on eBay, I think, at an outrageous price. Is that the one I'm thinking about? But anyway, I have uh, some left. Blue's looking forward to see what new Lamy ink comes out at the yeah. end of the year. Yep, so am I. Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew is currently using Levenger Bahama Blue. Okay. 
And he's got, let's see, in his 3776. Uh, Michelle says, uh, big mistake on their part, no purple in the new Lamy ink line. Huh. I wonder why. And that cross violet is a good alternative for the dark lilac. Interesting. Okay. Uh, big Block says, Lamy announced a surprise for this year, and a lot of people are hoping for these limited colors. Well, folks, I think I'm going to have to close up shop now. So, hey, thanks for joining me today, folks. I appreciate everybody's participation today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless. Take care. And, guys, don't text and drive out there, please. I'll be checking you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. I enjoyed it. It's always a blast with you guys on here. Later. Peace out.